Hello friends. Today we are going for discussing the cost benefit analysis in libraries. The cost benefit analysis, you know, in any kind of organization, cost benefit is rather a very important aspect in financial administration or management because without going for the equilibrium of cost and benefit, you cannot even understand or predict assess what are the amount you are spending and what are the benefit you are reaping from the interest of the community. And we are starting with the very beginning you know, cost benefit analysis. This is actually the cost study and primary mode of study is carrying out a descriptive and analytical method of cost studies. And data, what you are actually deriving from cost studies, so these are the other is for budgeting, is for accounting, uh, the performance measurement of the organization, and a sound and convincing presentation of the budget. This is of most important because without having a very sound budget and a detailed budget, you cannot go for analyzing the cost and benefit involved. And the steps in involving cost and benefit analysis, you know. The first and foremost thing is that identification and qualification of the process. The process you are going to apply for financial estimation must be analyzed and must be named in a manner which will permit isolation of a particular item throughout that particular process. With each and every head, every account head, budgeted head should be processed or should be accounted differently or should be assessed differently. And second thing, you know, the division of the process into a similar component step. So idea, after identification of the process to be analyzed, it is divided into smaller units, smaller components, facilitated analysis, for instance, the acquisition process further divided into book selection and other purchasing. So practically speaking, first of all, in case of the you have to choose the systems that are involved in the library management like the circulation system, then the acquisition system, then the charging and discharging system. So these are rather the systems or rather the identification and qualification of the process. And then you have to divide that one. So the sub-systems under these systems, under the circulation system, under the acquisition system, these are to be analyzed. So actually both the things are rather the part of cost analysis or cost benefit analysis. The determination of resources requirement is that identify the resources required for each and every company. And four resources are generally associated. Four resources, just keep in mind, these resources are very important. These are manpower, these are the raw material, there is the supplies, supervision, and the work environment or the, let's say the organizational environment. An identification of time and volume for process to be and related to cost. This is also important. As you see, cost is always some bit of related with time. The more time you will take for processing a particular job, the cost will be escalated in such in a proportionate way. Because we have seen specifically right now in this uh, global scenario or rather the weather market economy, the market is rather economy is driven by the market. We are seeing that for each and every time uh, every time is rather the time passes and obviously the uh, price of the uh, services, commodities are rather being increasing. So obviously there is a kind of relationship. So whenever you are rather identifying measuring any particular activities through cost, uh, just in my time and volume of the process is very important. Next, we can go for the different approaches of cost analysis and cost benefit analysis. The first is obviously the cost effectiveness, second one is the cost benefit, third one is the cost utility and the fourth one is the cost feasibility. Now regarding cost effectiveness, that is why this is nothing but reaping the best benefit with minimal cost. That is known as cost effectiveness. And cost benefit is whatever the achievement or whatever the output you are getting, whatever the outcome you are getting uh, in respect to the cost involved, that is the cost benefit. 
and cost utility, whether it is really, really required for spending that one money or not, the cost utility and cost feasibility from which particular sources you are accumulating costs or your funds and whether you are spending that money should be a cost or not. And the cost effective analysis. So here it is given clearly that is the cost effective analysis refers to the study of alternatives in relation to their cost and face to achieve a certain goal or outcome that I told you already. The purpose is therefore the achievement of certain objectives and goals. Cost effectiveness that is given with the minimum cost, with the minimal cost you have to achieve the operational goal. Um, that is a certain objective, it's not if you cannot fulfill the full objectives, total objectives of the organization, at least you try to fulfill some of the goals. So that, is, that can be called as cost effectiveness. The advantage is the cost benefit analysis is an important tool for the welfare economists because you know benefit is a qualitative term. I already told you that one. As a benefit is a quality term, many times you cannot actually see that one, what are the cost you is already you are spending or whatever the money you are spending for a particular job. The same thing, the return cannot be measured in quantitative way or other in quantification. You have to take that one in a qualitative term, specifically for the non-profit making organizations like hospitals, libraries, where you cannot measure the benefit in that sense in quantitative, quantitative terms. So in that case, you have to understand that one. Some bit welfare measure is involved therein, and these welfare measure these are considered as uh, something which is passively benefiting the society, and it refers to the evaluation and of alternatives in relation to their cost and benefits measured in monetary terms. Now next is the advantage is ascertaining say if any particular alternative is there or not. So we have different types of sets of alternatives like the risk for benefit ratio and determination of the set of alternatives or rather uh, for the education, health, security. Uh, so whenever you are finding any alternative, alternative means that is whatever the cost, instead of cost or instead of escalating cost, if you find any such kind of measure by which cost can be curbed, so obviously it is always cost related efforts to uh, the study of the alternatives in relation to the cost and the estimated utility derived thereof and cost utilities the appropriate to where the subjective assessment are made and there is a possible, possible outcome for a particular service. And cost feasibility that is the approach estimation of the cost of alternatives in order to ascertain such whether they could be considered or not. So whenever you have any cost feasibility that is, instead of gaining the fund, if you are actually thinking that well, there are other ways, you are checking that one, you are assessing the quality of that things, whether that can be implemented instead of cost or rather they can be replaced cost or not. And that is what has cost feasibility analysis. If the cost of any alternative exceeds the budget or other sources, then that alternative is not considered for further analysis. And then the methods, first one is the costing of the input at the input level, costing the throughput and the costing of the output. Input level, whenever you are acting in the various labor, materials, capital infrastructure, whenever you will put actually calculating the cost. So this is the cost of the input, throughput, while the program is going on, while the total work is going on, while the action is going on, the kind of project is going on. You know that one there is always one end beginning point and so the end point in between that whatever the cost is involved that is known as costing of throughput and costing of output when you got the outcome when you already got the thing or the product itself or the service now when you are rendering that one is the cost involved that is known as the costing of and one method is obviously some method the work measurement. In work measurement attempts to measure is the exact quantities of labor time used to carry particular task and study. So it is primarily based on the works and time study using various methods of technology. And second one is the estimation or ingredient method. Estimation or ingredient method, on the other hand, is the sub class of the work of study and used to enable work measurement is not possible. This method quantifies the resource inputs required to produce outcomes and the first identified for the observation of the discussion in the staff. 
this is the problem. And in like learning information science, this helps uh, the estimation. It is a help the estimation of expenditure for this service. Then it actually helps you to data how data can be utilized. It ensures optimal utilization of the resources. It helps in evaluating the efficiency of the staff. Other level managers can utilize them for decision making. It helps in controlling library operation and track the inputs required and the output derived thereof. And you see the example is the initial cost, that is the first time, and this initial cost is rather the first one, the initial one, and operational cost, this is actually the throughput, this is actually throughput, the continuing, this is the continuing one, this one is the continuing one, and the staff requirement for this one, hours of operation, shelving capacity, and the library, that is very, very well, suppose you are doing uh, acquisition. So initial cost for that one, collecting the thing, then operational cost, how many people you are doing that, whether you require the help of extra staff or not, if it is required, then you have to add the daily wage manpower, then staffing required, then hours of operation, the shelving capacity, whether your physical infrastructure is well enough or not, whether you can um, arrange all the documents on the shelves, calculation for petrol basis, circulation for petrol basis, that is whether you are ready to serve your patrons and whether the people are already in the workforce, human workforce is already in tune or not, longevity of the facilities, how long this will be you can actually keep this one running and service area and marketing projection, although this is actually having some bit of traveling library, so it is actually widely uh, told or taught a kind of hypo, but marketing potential till that it is rather somehow elusive, specifically for our cases. With this, I'm concluding this one, and if you have any problem, just let me know through my website. Thank you. Thank you very much.